Um, no, so today we're here to briefly describe a stormwater pollution prevention uh, project that was collaborat collaboratively developed by Behaviour Works and Melbourne Water. Um, we'll cover what we did, what happened, and we'll use this to highlight two key messages around behaviour change interventions and field trials. So just so you know the key messages while you're listening to our presentation, um, the first of these, which kind of ties into what Jeremy uh, spoke about this morning, is that field trials are a great way to get valuable insight into your target audience and of an intervention. And this understanding then increases the odds of future rollouts of programs or future success in that particular area. The second key message is that the trials are an experiment. Um, it allows us to test work um, to change people's behaviour to a certain issue. And again, this increases the odds of future success. So what was the problem? Dandenong Creek is in eastern, um, eastern Melbourne and it's heavily polluted. So water quality monitoring undertaken by Melbourne Water um, has shown high levels of heavy toxic metals in the creek, including things like cadmium and silver. Um, also recent testing has found um, permethrin, I think I've pronounced that right, um, which is a chemical used in insecticides. Um, so the impact of these is um, it's negatively impacting the health of the waterway, including both the flora and fauna. Um, and recently, um, the insecticides have actually been um, attributed to a whole lot of fish kills. Um, it's also having an impact on the local amenity value of this waterway. And um, there's been complaints from local residents about discoloration and odours. So I think it's just at this point important to note that um, Melbourne Water being largely an engineering kind of uh, organisation um, could have a, approached this with a standard sort of engineering solution. Um, and there definitely is one in the capital plan if all of this fails. Um, but we wanted to try a different approach about actually changing the behaviours so that we can actually impact the source of the problem and not just fix sort of the downstream end of this. So one of several programs Melbourne Water is investing in to fix the health of the waterway is a pollution prevention program, which is targeting stormwater pollution behaviours in small to medium bits, uh, industrial businesses um, in an old Joe's Ca Creek catchment uh, in Bayswater, which is shown here in green. So Old Joe's Creek is now um, an underground drain which runs through this catchment and then it discharges into uh, Old Joe's Creek and there's around 1,300 properties in this catchment. So based on EPA monitoring and Melbourne Waters monitoring, um, it's typically the chemicals and other materials entering stormwater through uh, business sites drains and also curbside drains that is actually impacting on the stormwater quality um, which then impacts on the creek. So this led us to want to answer the question is, can a behaviour change intervention be designed which engages the businesses in this area to reduce the pollutants entering stormwaters on their properties? Um, so the development of this behaviour change program um, was a three-part process. An important part of this um, was that it's a very much a collaborative pro uh, process involving multiple stakeholders. So at Melbourne Water engaged Behaviour Works to drive this process, um, but we also had the EPA, the Local Water Authority and Council involved throughout the process, um, and we're all meeting together again next week. So um, the process began with uh, Behaviour Works undertaking a literature review and also um, a whole lot of stakeholder interviews to understand what has been done in this space previously. So this highlighted three things, which was education, inspections and fines, as um, having potential to impact uh, on behaviour change. And this has also been previously done in Old Joe's Creek catchment, obviously not to the uh, effect we would have liked previously. Um, but while our group was in agreement about these first two approaches, um, we didn't want, we wanted to stay away from fines and leave that sort of in the uh, uh, traditional EPA space when they go in um, based on uh, their evidence. So we really wanted to be the carrot and not the stick in this instance. Um, so then the stakeholder group worked collaboratively to design um, a draft behaviour change intervention, which was later refined by Behaviour Works. And so I'll just de describe this program next, and then Mark's going to talk about the outcomes of this. So one issue uh, was identified in this process is that stormwater pollution is more often the result of, of cumulative small accidents and spills rather than, than from bad, bad practices or one large significant event. Um, so our behaviour change program was therefore based on five key behaviours um, that all businesses should be trying to uh, follow to prevent stormwater pollution on their sites. And these are based on EPA's uh, poster here. And I'll just, because it's probably hard to read, just quickly these are, one, keeping your drains clear and um, cleaned of litter. Two, um, having pit traps to stop materials actually entering the stormwater drains. 
Three is to secure loose raw materials and store these under cover. Uh, this also includes uh, keeping lids on bins and skips. Uh, four is to have bunding around where you keep storages, like chemical storages, um, so that these can't actually then run into the drains. And five is to have spill kits and spill pallets to catch the accidents. Um, so these behaviours form the foundation of our program. Um, and it's important to note, I guess, that rather than focusing on engaging with the businesses about the pollution in the creek and what impact that's having, we wanted to hone in what the business could do and actually how they can help influence the problem. <coughs> So I'll just briefly describe um, the interventions we went through, and uh, there's a lot more detail behind this, um, but that's sort of, you can ch chat to us afterwards about that. So we did a broad scale mail out, and we probably could learn some tips from that previous presentation about, uh, we was discussions about what the envelope should look like and should it be to the resident and all these things. Um, but this was basically to have a broad scale initial uh, mail out so they knew what was happening in the area. And this is letting them know about the campaign in general and also offering a free assessment of their business and their current stormwater pollution prevention practices. Um, we then engaged an external contractor to engage with the businesses in the catchment and offer them a free assessment face to face. Um, so just on a side note, we uh, selected this contractor based on their understanding of things that can contaminate uh, stormwater on a business site and also their ability to actually engage with the uh, businesses. So the assessors then went out and they did a door knock of every business in the catchment um, they discussed the program, what we were trying to achieve. They then gave out um, that EPA poster that you saw on the previous slide and then offered a free assessment to uh, businesses that we categorised as high risk. And this was based on EPA's advice around the types of business and that what sort of chemicals or store metals and things like that they have on site that they could potentially impact on stormwater. So the businesses that accepted our uh, free offer of an assessment, um, which was both voluntary and confidential, uh, then completed a verbal and visual assessment of their business practices. And um, this was predominantly, again, based on those uh, five behaviours we saw before. And at the end of the assessment, the assessors would recommend uh, improvements that that business could make uh, on site. And they also got the business to identify three, up to three of those initiatives that they would commit to implementing in the next few weeks uh, after the visit. So then a few weeks later, the um, assessors actually returned to those businesses and they went through a very similar checklist process of assessing their business practices to see if there'd been improvements um, and also to see if they'd actually completed the actions they committed to. So at the same time, while we had that sort of on the ground face-to-face -face, uh, interactions happening, we also got uh, EPA uh, to install EPA report pollution signs within the catchment um, and also got the stormwater drain stenciled so that people had more awareness about where stormwater goes to and that it said um, rainwater only to stormwater. Um, so just before we get to the actual outcomes, um, some of the outputs from this part of the program. Um, so we had over 800 businesses in the catchment were door knocked um, and informed about the program. Over, of these businesses, over 250 of them were categorised as high risk. Uh, over 500 of these stormwater pollution uh, prevention posters were handed out. And of the high risk businesses, about one fifth of them uh, took up the offer of a free and voluntary assessment. Um, I'm just hand over to Mark now, who will go through the actual outcomes. Thanks, Jane. Um, I get a bit twitchy if I'm stuck behind a lectern. Um, and I was just thinking, as someone who works in behavioural science, I like to be one step closer to the audience. <laughs> so I'll leave you a moment to ponder the, the depth of that particular statement. Um, what I want to do is two things. Um, one is to um, give a bit of an overview of some of the behavioural outcomes we were able to identify in the target group as a result of the intervention. And then also use, I suppose, some of the insights that we gained through understanding the audience better to reflect on what this means for future iterations of this particular intervention, either in jo Old Joe's Creek, uh, in the estate, or, or beyond. Um, to make the point, though, that the ultimate outcome of a project like this is obviously what it, its impact it has on the problem itself. Um, and a, a group based at the University of Melbourne have been monitoring the water quality of the creek. They conducted tests before we started our intervention. They conducted tests at the end of it. Uh, we just don't have the data. It's literally, they literally are in the lab right now analysing it. Um, so the data obviously will, will help us uh, refine the interventions even further based on what it is that we that, that the water quality data is telling us. Um, so I wanted to, as I said, talk about the behaviours though that we were able to identify. And just as a reminder, these are the, the five main behavioural groupings that we focused on. 
And the, the detail underneath really influenced the particular checklists um, that our assessors used both for the initial assessment and the follow-up. So these are the sort of behaviours they were, specific behaviours they were looking for in the businesses during their first visit and their second visit. Um, I was just thinking every, uh, every academic presentation needs a complicated graph, so here's mine. Um, try not to get, don't, don't give yourself a headache trying to understand the whole thing. I'll take you through the main points I want you to get out of this. Um, the blue was the initial assessment and the percentage of businesses complying to that specific behaviour, and the red was the follow-up visit. So there's a couple of things to take from this graph. The first is actually by and large the audience when it comes to stormwater pollution, businesses in this catchment are doing okay. And the feedback from the assessors was they certainly didn't find any horror stories and consistently poor behaviour. By and large, businesses were engaged with the issue and were pretty much doing what was needed of them, what was expected of them uh, based on the EPA's recommendations. The second thing to note was um, that there was some opportunity for change, particularly around how well, uh, how the sites are maintained and cleaned whether there was a spill kit present or not. So in the event of a spill, did they actually have the materials to clean it up? And then did they have a, a, a response plan to deal with the issue when it came up? So those were the, the things that the assessors found were the biggest, some of the be be bigger opportunities for change, as well as protecting stormwater drains um, with bunding or other materials to stop spills from entering into that drain. Um, and you'll see, so the third thing I want you to take out of it is that there's a general indication of a positive shift as a result of this between the initial assessment and the, uh, the follow-up visit. Unfortunately, we, we had a smaller sample size. We had about 40 businesses take part in both the initial and the follow-up. So there is some question about the confidence that we can say these trends are representative of what might be happening more broadly. But we did find there was statistically significant results for four main areas. Um, and that is, we found a significant increase in the number of businesses that put in spill response plans during, at the after visit. There was a significant uh, increase in the number of businesses that went out and purchased spill kits as a result of this particular intervention. We also found there's a bit of significant change in the general cleanliness of the site as a result of the, of the visit. And we also found one of the, the key things the EPA want people to do is know what the hotline for the EPA is to call in the event of a spill. And so the assessors went out and actually handed out that on a poster, which is actually the poster you saw before, and pretty much all the businesses in the follow-up visit had that poster displayed prominently somewhere on site as well. So those are some of the outcomes that we we're able to, to track and identify from a behavioural perspective. Um, but usefully also, and that's often the, the, the design of, um, oh, my slides have just changed. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. Um, what these interventions and these trials allow us to do is actually reflect on what works and what doesn't work and gain some further insights in terms of the actual audience. Um, so a couple of things to note from that. The first is this audience, as I said before, generally are pretty positive about this particular issue. Um, they're wanting to do the right thing. They were willing to have the ins inspectors come on site. They had lots of questions to ask of them. So it's not an issue that, in terms of engaging with the target audience, is going to create any hassle or resentment or resistance from the particular audience, which is useful to know because it reflects the type of engagement that you might want to be having. The second is, and this goes for the letters, is the mail out was not successful. Nothing to do with the format of the letter we found out that about 80% of the letters didn't even get to the target audience. So they, because uh, small to medium businesses tend to have a high turn turnover, these letters tended to go to the landlords of the actual site or the building, and they never got to the target audience. So the effectiveness of the letter had nothing to do with the envelope and all the rest. It had everything to do with it just didn't get to the audience that it was intended to go to. But as an engagement medium, the assessors were very effective in getting the message to the target audience. Um, that door knocking meant that we could go very broad scale across the entire estate and engage with just about every business there and engage to a level of depth as well where we were able to provide information and there was a, a bit of back and forth in terms of questions being asked and information being provided. So as a tool of engagement, assessors compared to mail outs was one of the, is, are more successful to mail outs for this particular behaviour with this particular target audience. Two other things we found, uh, one other, the main other thing we found that I wanted to share with you, uh, small businesses love this type of intervention, big businesses don't like it. And the main reason is big businesses often have uh, a number of different sites 
around the country. They often have a centralised head office somewhere. So an assessor turning up and door knocking is often not going to be able to speak to the right person at the right time. They may be somewhere else. Um, they may have been in meetings and so forth. Um, they're less flexible and responsive to be able to deal with assessors when they come on. Whereas for small to medium businesses, they had exactly the sort of flexibility and could react well when an assessor came on site to be able to engage with them. So small to medium businesses liked this kind of intervention, big businesses didn't. So what did all this mean for future iterations of, of this project in Old Joe's Creek? Two main things. Um, we think there needs to be a continued emphasis on carrot versus stick, as Jane said. Businesses we found want to do the right thing. In many cases, they were already doing the right thing. There was a high turnover in the businesses, in the actions that they committed to. About 80% of the businesses actually did them. But we found that the, the actions that, and, that they were doing and what they committed to do was often the easier things, both in terms of time and money. So one of the ways that we're thinking as a way forward is to support uh, businesses potentially with some incentives and, and, and other um, uh, um, rewards and so forth to actually make sure that they do the other behaviours that they still needed to do. The other key lesson is the value of having assessors on the ground to actually understand more about the audience. And even though we've got a clear idea of how we might tailor this intervention down and make it a little bit more pointed, having a component of intelligence gathering of the audience will be part, will be our recommendation, to be part of any future iteration of this particular project. There is incredible value in having an assessor go and actually talk to as many businesses as possible and bring that information back to us so that we can tweak the intervention appropriately. And that leads beautifully into the, main, the two main messages, as James said, that we'd like you to get out of this particular <coughs> presentation. One, outside of the behaviour changes that they encourage, interventions are a great way to understand more about your audience, particularly if you don't know much about them or you have some very broad assumptions. And the second is that interventions actually allow you to trial different activities and ideas, see which works and what doesn't, and what you might take off or add to it for future rollout and future iterations of this project.